Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. As you are coming in, I would love to know where you are signing in from. So if you could navigate your way to the chat and type in where you're calling in from so I can see who all we have in this chat. Okay, India is in the building. Belgium. Saudi Arabia. Illinois. Hey, Lisa, I'm from Illinois originally. New Jersey, Germany, Argentina, all over the world. I love, I love this about Udacity people. We have people all over the world joining us in one central location today. I see California, Moscow, Bangalore, US. If you're just joining, navigate your way to the chat and let us know where you are signing in from. Alabama, right next door to me. I'm here in Georgia now. North Carolina, awesome. We have people from literally all over the world in one place right now. I think that is the coolest thing ever. Um, and we're also gonna be talking about LinkedIn, which is a very global platform. So it's right on topic. Okay, we'll give a couple more seconds for people to join in as I pull up the presentation. Let me. Let's see. If you're just joining, let us know where you're calling in from. New Orleans, Federico, he's like a webinar veteran at this point. He's here on everything. I am not having any worries about him landing a job because he's getting all of the knowledge he needs here at these webinars and workshops. Nigeria, North Carolina, awesome. Great, so thank you all for, for sharing that information. Um, so today we are going to be talking about LinkedIn and specifically today we're gonna to be talking about your profile. Now there are a lot of resources out there that talk to you about creating a good profile, but there are some things that I think a lot of people aren't aware of or they, they're not trying new things and seeing what works for them. So I wanna give you all some strategies. And ultimately the goal is to utilize LinkedIn as a platform for personal branding so that you're drawing attention to your profile and people are reaching out to you with intentions of hiring you. So that's why we're doing a two-part series. Um, so it's the LinkedIn guide to getting job interviews without applying. Um, and the first part is today is profile optimization. And then our next session is gonna be um, on engaging and content creation, and that'll be part two on August 26th. So um, stay tuned, make sure you attend that. After both of those sessions, you're getting a lot of really good value and you can really start to put things into place that'll start drawing that traffic over to your profile. So uh, my name is Brett Ellis. I'm a career coach here with Udacity. Um, I've been here since uh, mid-April, um, but I've been working in the career coaching personal branding space for most of my career, um, more so in the higher education space. So I've worked with college students primarily and helping them find jobs upon graduation. Um, but now I work with really a multiple of age ranges and people at different points in their career to really help them showcase the work that they're doing through personal and professional branding as well as career coaching and job search placement as well. Um, I love doing this. This is my favorite thing. I love the one-on-one, -on -one, but my favorite is engaging with groups and teaching a lot of people at one time because I think it's a great opportunity to learn, but to also connect with other like-minded people. So um, today we're going to be talking about why is it important to use LinkedIn? This is probably the number one question I get because I talk about LinkedIn to my friends, to my family, and I'm always on LinkedIn. If you, if you follow me, you see me posting quite frequently. I'm always commenting and engaging, so we'll talk about that. Um, then we're just gonna kind of go through what I would call like the anatomy of a good LinkedIn profile. So we're gonna go through each step, um, talk about your profile picture and banner, um, creating a keyword optimized headline, writing an effective about section summary, which is a big area that I wanna touch on today, um, emphasizing achievements and media in your experience section. That's a good point I wanna make as well. Um, and then 
one thing that I see a lot of students need help with is really actually highlighting their nano degree um, throughout their personal branding documents, especially their LinkedIn and through their education section. Um, and then lastly, we'll talk about recommendations and using those to establish credibility in your industry. And then we will finish off with just some questions and some closing statements from you all. So what I want you all to do is jump back in the chat and I want you to tell me very briefly what you hope to gain from this session. What are you hoping to learn? Um, what is your goal after attending this? Um, maybe you've used LinkedIn before but don't really know how to use it as effectively. Drop it in the comments and let me know what are your, your major goals or what are you hoping to gain from this session? Any brave volunteers? While I wait, my takeaway is that you all start getting job interviews without applying. Um, that, is, that is my takeaway for you all. Are there any additional takeaways that people are hoping to gain from this? So if it's not included, I can make sure to, to touch on it. Optimize the profile to highlight key capabilities and experiences. We're definitely gonna touch on that. Um, I'm a college student, so I'm looking for internships. I am glad that you brought that up because I see college students do very, very well on LinkedIn. For the most part, um, us working professionals, it's kind of expected, but people are oftentimes surprised to see college students very actively engaged, and those people tend to find jobs very quickly. They're highly sought out. Um, more information to refine the profile, hoping to get interviews. Yep. Uh, build profile, understand highlighting skills. Okay, um, struggling to get full-time jobs. This should be helpful. Looking for internships. How to get top people in my field to connect with me. That's a good point. Um, something that I'll probably touch a little bit more on in the next session, um, but I'll try to make sure that I give a brief overview of that as well. Okay, so thank you all for um, contributing to that. That helps me to um, have a little bit better understanding of what you all are hoping to gain. So let us jump right in. This is why you should really be using LinkedIn. So these are my top reasons. You'll hear different reasons from other people, but I can only speak on my experience and what's worked really well for me. Um, it Number one, it's one of the most effective places to find a good job, and sometimes you don't even have to apply. So if you all have been applying for jobs for months or know people who have and you're failing um, or you, you know people who are not doing really well, it's partially because the online application system is flawed in a sense where you can apply for any job at any time from anywhere with any background. So you can apply for something as um, you know, as low level as like a receptionist or a front desk assistant or something like that, or the director of a department. There's really nothing holding you back from applying to those things. So really these recruiters and employers are flooded with applications that they have to review. So they have a lot of different systems in place that they're filtering people out. Um, and so LinkedIn is really good because it's, it's a way for you to showcase what you do as a way to draw their attention to you. So you don't have to do the applying. So that's why I like it. Number two, it makes it easy to connect and learn from other like-minded professionals from around the world. So very similar to Udacity, actually, there, there, you know, there are people from around the world that you get to connect with in one place. This is not possible through a resume. It's not possible through a cover letter. It's not possible through your CV to connect with this many people. So it's a great opportunity not only to build relationships, but to learn as well. I tell people all the time, Every time I log into LinkedIn, it's like going to a conference. It's like going to a, a, a workshop or a networking event. You're connecting with people. You're learning different things. Number three, it's a great tool for personal branding and becoming a subject matter expert. So for those of you who are really interested in taking your career to a high level, you want to be known as somebody who is an expert in data analytics. You want to be an expert in machine learning. You want to be an expert in AI. LinkedIn is a great place for you to establish that credibility and to start branding yourself as an expert through that. And we'll talk a lot more about that in the second session where we're um, talking about creating content like posts and articles. 
Um, and then number four, it can help you create multiple streams of income. I don't know too many people who don't want multiple streams of income. So that can be really helpful. Um, for me, it was a way to really showcase my brand for jobs, but it also helps draw people over to my profile for me to gain career coaching clients outside of Udacity as well. So you can kind of kill two birds with one stone there and build your brand as well as attract job seekers, but also attract clients with the work that you're doing. So a lot of these things that I'm going to share are relevant for both job seekers and freelancers or entrepreneurs. So if you're in that mindset or that's your goal, a lot of this is going to be relevant and transferable. All right. So moving right along. So I mentioned we were going to talk specifically about the profile picture and your banner. And so that's kind of the first thing that you see when you go to a profile. So if you take a look at my profile picture, um, it's a high quality picture. It looks better when it's not a screenshot, I promise. Um, but it is a quality picture. I'm dressed appropriately, have a nice, you know, clean haircut. Um, it's, it's very visible to see my face, but I think one of the things that really helps with my picture is that it showcases me in action. So for me, I'm working on building my brand as a speaker and as a workshop facilitator. So if you see my profile picture of me actually doing that, that adds another layer to my branding. Um, another thing that you can do is just, you know, a simple straight on professional headshot um, that works as well does not need to be you going to a studio with all of the lighting, it could simply be, you know, a, a good phone camera straight on with good lighting. Um, you don't want to take a selfie, you don't want to have it really dark, you don't want to have weird angles, um, take some time to get a good picture, it makes a big difference. Um, and then you're definitely more likely to receive page views. Um, I think the statistic is for times more likely that somebody will visit your profile if you have a picture versus if you don't. So that's something really important for you to know. Um, so that's that's pretty much it with the profile picture. It's not too much. There's not a whole lot you can do to make that better. Just make sure that it has all of those things that we talked about. Um, your banner, this is kind of like, this should be towards the bottom of your priorities list as it relates to um, your LinkedIn profile, unless maybe you're a business owner or a freelancer. Um, it's a great way for you to showcase um, what you want people to see as soon as they come to your profile. So it's almost kind of like a, a storefront if you think about it. So for me, I want people to know exactly what I do as soon as they get to my page they don't even have to scroll all the way through and do those things so um, it also represent your represents your brand so you want to make sure that you have similar colors for me I use a lot of um, blue white gray and black and so that all ties in from my banner to what I'm wearing in the picture um, to some other things there as well and if you're looking for an easy way to create one of these um, go to canva.com and then search in LinkedIn banner and it'll give you the exact dimensions and some pre-made templates where you can just go in and change out the information to replace it with your own. So that's a very easy kind of hack to do that if you're not skilled in graphic design or creating that banner for yourself. Okay, so moving on to the headline. This is extremely important, um, and I don't think that people realize how much weight this has. Um, so it's really important for keyword searches specifically, but also for enticing people over to your profile. So um, I'll talk about the keyword searches first. So if you are on LinkedIn and you look at the search feature, if an employer was trying to find somebody who was a data analyst, they may type in data analyst in that search bar. If you don't have data analyst in your headline somewhere, your chances of going towards the top of those search results drops very dramatically. So if you are in a nano degree program focused on data analytics, you want to get a job as a data analyst, you need to have that somewhere in your headline so that it contributes to your keyword searches. So if people are looking for somebody who has that skill set, they're finding you there. So your first step needs to be to think about what recruiters are actually searching for. What are the skill sets that they're looking for? What are the things that they want um, to find people for? Because this is what they're doing instead of sometimes reviewing applications. They're skipping that whole process and they're doing the work of going out and finding somebody. 
Um, so you want to showcase that based on what keywords recruiters are searching for, but you also want to showcase things that you're actually good at. So if you don't have any experience as a data analyst and you didn't even do a nano degree, you're not going to put that there because you're not you don't have that skill set, you don't have that to offer. So you want to keep those two things in mind and make sure that both of those are aligned, what recruiters are searching for and then what you're good at and what you wanna be known for. Um, so here's something that most people do because LinkedIn defaults to your current position at your current company. That's just the default setting that LinkedIn has. It's on you to go and change that. The reason why you don't necessarily want to do that is because the role of LinkedIn is not for you to showcase your employers. It's for you to showcase yourself as a professional and your own per, uh, personal brand. Plus, they can go one step below or two steps below in your education or in your experience section and see where you work and what you do. So it's kind of a wasted opportunity there. Um, unless maybe it's part of your, your job duties. Maybe you work in sales as, and LinkedIn is one of the tools that you use. You may be asked to kind of make sure that that's present there. But if not, you wanna be really focused on your own brand. So here's another example. So for those of you who may be in digital marketing, um, packed full of keywords and skill sets. So digital marketers specializing in social media management, paid advertising and brand strategy. Um, very simple. Um, if those are things that you're good at and you're going in digital marketing, feel free to steal it. I don't care. I'm not um, <laughs> holding that one back. Um, but you see for mine, I have things like personal branding, career development, speaker, college, career again, career again. So if people are searching for career, I'm going to go towards the top. Um, and then also LinkedIn for entrepreneurs. And the funny thing about this is I actually changed this since then. Um, I change mine all the time. I try new things. I see what works, see what, what doesn't work. I get feedback from people. Um, and then I make adjustments based on that. Uh, another cool thing about this section is, let's just say, for example, I woke up tomorrow morning and I decided I wanted to give up all of this career coaching, all of this speaking, and I wanted to be a graphic designer. Because I can do some graphic design, I could literally shift my entire branding, make my banner focused on graphic design, um, maybe take another picture of me at my laptop, change my headline to graphic designer, and then I would start to be found for that. So you really want to make sure that you're focused on what you want to be found for and not just a comprehensive list of all the things that you do. And that goes for your LinkedIn, your resume, everything. Everything should be targeted on your next step and not necessarily a comprehensive list of everything you've ever done. Okay. So now I want you to take some time to think, and I would love for a couple of you to share. Again, just drop in the comments. Let me know what are some important keywords for you to consider, and what are some keywords that recruiters might search to find you, um, and, and the types of roles that you're looking for. What are those employers looking for? So if you're in digital marketing, what are they looking for? If you're in um, data analytics, what are they looking for? If you're going for artificial intelligence, what are they looking for? Okay, copywriter, good. Uh, machine learning engineer, software engineer, software developer, data scientist, great. Um, front end web developer, these are all good brand manager, machine learning, deep learning. Um, so I like that you put enthusiast. I wanna talk about that piece specifically because I see a lot of people put enthusiasts or aspiring. Both of those can sometimes have a negative connotation because I could personally be a machine learning enthusiast. I have no idea what goes into machine learning. I have no nano degree background. I have no education. I have no work experience. So sometimes you want to be careful with that language um, and calling yourself like an enthusiast because that just may mean that you're passionate about something. It doesn't necessarily reflect on your skill set to do that. Um, okay, business analyst, data analyst. Okay, great. These are all really good. Um, but you can build on them a little bit more, kind of going back to that example. So um, let's say you do go the business analyst and you want that to be kind of your focus. You could say something like business analyst specializing in and then include two or three more keywords. Or you could do like business analyst predictive analytics expert or something like that. Just play around with different things and see what works, but really utilize that whole space. I recommend utilizing that entire space because it really contributes to your keyword searches. Awesome. Okay, moving right along. So the next section I wanna talk about is your about section. 
or your summary. So they kind of interchange the titles with that. Um, this is a strategy that I came up with to help you kind of remember, um, and I call it the skip strategy. I called it that because if you don't do this, they might skip over your profile. Um, but so let's go through it a little bit. So most people I see theirs will say something like, dynamic professional with 10 years of experience. It's very movie trailer-esque, um, but you want to make it to where it's a little bit more personable because this section is really the only area throughout your entire profile that you get to showcase some personality. Um, everything else is kind of a bunch of different moving puzzle pieces. This is an area for you to showcase some personality and really bring everything together. Um, so the S stands for story. So you want to share your career story. You want to talk briefly about your background. You want to talk some about what you're currently doing um, because those are things that are going to provide people with the context that's going to be helpful for you in understanding how they can help you if they've come to visit your profile. So make sure that you tell that very briefly. Um, Rachel, if you could drop the link to the webinar that Angela did on um, your perfect pitch, that can be a really great resource for you in terms of building out that story a little bit. And this is also something that you can utilize when you're in an interview and they ask you to tell me about yourself. That's a great webinar, so a good resource for you in building your LinkedIn summary as well as answering that kind of question. Or if you're just out at a networking event and people ask you what you do. This all, that webinar is great for all of those things. The next thing is keywords again. So keywords are gonna be pulled very strongly from your headline as well as your summary. So you can find ways to infuse those keywords. So if machine learning is important, maybe include that somewhere in your narrative or you can tell your story and then at the bottom put like top strengths or unique skill sets and then include those kind of keywords just back to back um, in more of a list format. But make sure you have keywords there as well because that contributes to your searchability as well. Um, your interests. So this is really important because like I mentioned, um, somebody may not know how they can help you when they go to your profile if you don't state that up front to them. So if you're looking for a role, you don't have to be up front and say, I'm looking for a job or say, I'm unemployed and I need to find work. You can say something like, I'm looking for, I'm always open to opportunities to further my career in artificial intelligence or something like that so that people know if they have opportunities, how they can help you. Because even if recruiters are not finding your profile, maybe somebody else is and they're going to connect you to somebody else. That's what a lot of people do on LinkedIn. It's very helpful in it, just in the spirit of like helping each other move up in life. Um, so make sure you do that. And then also try to include some personal interests there as well. Don't spend too much time on this because it's still a professional network at the end of the day, but you still want to showcase things because that gives people things to talk about if they are to reach out to you and they may have something from there that they can use as an icebreaker. So I think mine says something like, um, I have been called a certification addict, um, which means I just really like to learn and I like to pursue certifications. And then I put something like, someday I'd love, love to be known as a um, public speaker, a concert venue owner, and a little league baseball coach. So just a very brief kind of um, hint at some things that I love um, so that people may be able to connect with me on that um, passion as well, which leads us into a good um, last point, which is passion. This is very missed in the tech space. I know how a lot of people in, in tech think, but as it relates to personal branding, you want people to be energized around you. You want people to know that you love what you do. You want people to be able to see that throughout all of the work that you do. And this is a great area for you to really show enthusiasm towards what you're working for. So maybe you're including something about pursuing a nano degree because you found a passion. Maybe you are changing careers and you're going from something completely different to something in the tech space. State that in this area. This is a great opportunity for you to address potential red flags. This is a great opportunity for you to avoid any confusion and state things up front so you can be transparent about that, but you want people to have an understanding that you love the work that you do, and then you can clear up any potential confusion there as well. Uh, let me take a look at this question. Is there any way to convey the reason for a change in career focus? So yes, um, how can you make it appealing? Great, so yeah, um, that is 
a great opportunity for you to do that. That's why you want to tell your story. So let's say, for example, you were a teacher, you're a math teacher. Um, you can share that in your summary and say something like, I spent the first five years of my career teaching math and I loved being able to help students learn whatever. Um, as my career interests have changed, I found a passion for data analytics. And that led me to um, intentionally take upon myself to enroll in a nano degree program through Udacity where I've learned keyword, 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 keyword. And now I'm hoping to transition my career to that whatever. Um, something like that. If you don't provide that context, people are going to go through your profile and see, well, he is a teacher here, a teacher here, and a teacher here. Why is he trying to be a data analyst when he, you know, they're going to have questions. They should never have questions out of confusion from your profile. Their only question should be wanting to learn more. And honestly, like how much do they have to pay you? Um, <laughs> that's my strategy. That's my goal is that you should always have everything up front. Um, because it eliminates any type of confusion that people have when they go to your profile. So if you are changing careers, which mo many Udacity students are, this is a great place to tell that story and to provide that context. Okay, so jumping down to the experience section, this area is one of the most important because it's the most important in general. Um, I think this is probably the most common question that I get from Udacity students in general about like gaining experience. Um, so think about what that means to employers. This is oftentimes the first, the first section that they're looking at. If they're in a hurry and they really wanna find somebody, they may skip through your entire summary um, and go straight to your experience and see what you've done. So what you want to really make sure you're doing here is focusing on your achievements, which really means highlighting your impact. You don't wanna provide a big blocky paragraph of text describing your company. They can do their own research to find that out. You don't wanna provide a big blocky paragraph about your roles and responsibilities. That oftentimes can either be assumed or it's not as important as the impact that you're providing. So if you think about any job opening um, or any client need is a, opportunity. It's a problem that needs to be solved or it's a goal that they want to accomplish. So if you don't showcase your ability to solve problems or your ability to achieve goals, you're missing a huge opportunity. And so as you're thinking about some of your past positions, you really want to focus on what are the results that you have contributed to the organization or the company or whatever it is. If all you do is say, I do this, I do this, I run this, I manage this, you don't do anything to showcase whether or not you were actually good at your job or that you actually made a meaningful impact on the organization. So you really want to showcase that. Um, Rachel, if you could, there's, <laughs> there's another webinar that I, I did previously on writing achievement statements. Um, and that can be really helpful for you in terms of creating that experience section and showcasing what you've done in the past in a more impactful way. Um, so we have a, 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 another uh, previous webinar that we can include the link to that video for you to kind of go back on your own time. Um, so as I said, highlight your impact, showcase problem solving, write it out using the strategy that you'll learn in that other webinar. Um, and that can be really helpful for you in terms of showcasing your impact. Um, so there are some people who don't even do that. But if you compare those two, think about it like this. One profile says runs departmental Instagram page versus this person who says that they increase social media and engagement by 150% as a result of hosting live events, creating engaging content, and putting out articles and resource guides. Which one of those is more appealing? Obviously the one that showcases the impact and this person kind of falls to the wayside. Now, if you wanna take that to the next level, which all of you should want to, um, is uploading media, showcasing the work that you've done through work samples. So you're changing your mindset about what a LinkedIn profile is supposed to do. I like to think of a LinkedIn profile as a living, breathing portfolio. So this is an opportunity for you to showcase your best work, for you to showcase the most relevant work to what you're looking for. Um, based on what you've done in previous positions. So as you're thinking about some of your past positions, one, you wanna make sure that you're showcasing transferable things. So if you're going from one job that's a little bit unrelated from what you're trying to do, showcase the things that are related. Don't give a list of 10 achievements and only two of them are actually closely related to that new role. 
make it as transferable as you possibly can. And the same goes for media. Um, we're, we use a very um, consistent strategy here in the careers team. Uh, Udacity is the show and tell method. So it's very easy to say that you've done something. It's another thing to be able to prove it with data or with samples. So a couple of ideas to get you thinking are pictures, videos, graphics. So especially if you're in kind of like the digital marketing space, yours should be flooded with different visual graphics. Now, for those of you who may be on kind of like the, the data side or the coding side, that's a little bit more challenging because one, those things are not aesthetically pleasing on the back end, and two, a lot of times those things are confidential. And so you have to think a little bit more outside the box in terms of what media you might upload. And I just wanted to kind of you know, mention that this is by no means like required. If you don't do this, it's not like you will never get a job. It's just one way to take it to the next level. Um, so it's helpful to be able to showcase some of your previous projects. Um, and so a couple of things that you can think of if those aren't relevant for you is maybe including links to websites if you've helped develop those. Um, reports, if you do any type of work with data, maybe focus more specifically on the output, um, the data visual visualizations, the charts, the, the presentations that you may have given, you can go back in and redact confidential information or replace it. Um, people just kind of want to get an understanding of how you do the work that you do. Um, and another thing is even if none of those things work, you can potentially upload recommendation letters or client testimonials. For me personally, um, if you look at my profile, I have a combination of just about everything. I have videos, I have pictures, I have PowerPoints, I have newsletters, I have flyers, I have how-to guides in PDF format. I like to showcase a wide range of, of things. But another thing to think about is if you don't have any media, if you can't think of any media from your previous positions, keep this in the back of your mind as you progress throughout your career. Whenever you take on a major project, one of the things that pops into your head should be how can I showcase this once I'm done? How can I visualize this to where it's aesthetically pleasing or simplified enough to where people would understand what I'm talking about. And this is something that I really pride myself on is, is being very intentional about the work that I'm doing and doing things that are going to benefit my employer and benefit me at the same time. So keep that in mind as you go throughout your career, as you think about maybe the current position that you're in or your future position, how can you document your experience and document your impact at that place so that future employers can see that. Um, one way to take it like even even further is to connect those achievements to your media. So a couple of things that I've done is talk about being contracted to do workshop series and then I have media that they can go look at that showcases pictures as well as survey data from that specific achievement. Um, so that's just one way to really take it up a notch. And my goal with that is if I'm doing the right things with my keyword searches, if I'm putting out content people are drawn to my profile, then they see my work, then they see that I've done good work, then they can actually go and see samples of my work, compare that to the person who's doing the bare minimum, and this person is much more likely to get hired. And so I would even share like my experience here with Udacity and the position I had before this, both of those experiences came through LinkedIn without me ever having to apply. And I would attribute that a lot to my ability to showcase my impact as well as show relevant work samples. Um, so keep those things in mind. Um, a lot of people get discouraged here because they don't have things that they can showcase, but think about if that's an issue, how can you address that in the future? Um, so I see we have a couple of questions here. Um, can the showcase examples be links to projects? Yes, I think that's a great idea. Um, I think that you can also do that in your education section as well. You can include links and media there, um, which a lot of people don't know. You can do it in your experience section as well as your education. So if you're, I think we'll talk about that in a minute, um, but good question. Um, what about fresh graduates? What to write in this important section? Um, you may not have a lot to talk about, um, but you can utilize your education section to showcase some uh, projects that you've done through your um, nano degree program, through your college degree program, through a certification program. Anything like that is great for you to upload. But if you don't have any work experience, we can't create that for you. So just keep that in your mind as you go through your career and think about how you may document that. Um, okay, I'm considering entering the workforce in the same field, designing and building software. I've learned 
I show the gap in employment and be prepared to explain why any of it. So that's a great question. If there's any reason why you have a gap, so maybe you're returning back to the workforce, maybe you did an entrepreneurial venture for a while, maybe you had to take time to take care of your family, whether you had a, a baby or had to take care of an elderly family member or something like that. Um, I think it's always helpful for you to fill in that gap with something. Um, don't make things up. Don't put any fluff there, but tell people what happened in that time frame. Um, as long as you feel comfortable with that. If you don't feel comfortable sharing that you were taking care of a family member, then you may just have to be confident with that gap and be prepared to have that conversation when employers ask. I will say in my experience, employers are a lot more worried when the gap is current than when it's in the past. So if you're working somewhere now, but you had a 10 year gap before that, I don't think that employers are stressing that too much where it sometimes can become a red flag is if you have experience, 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 and like a two, three year gap with no explanation. That at that point, they're gonna wonder, what have you been doing for the last few years? So you always wanna try to find a way to showcase that, um, even if, all you're doing is nano degree programs and building your experience. Just create a position that says um, something like a uh, student and then include the things there so they can see what you've been doing in that, that, that time. Um, some recruiters will actually go throughout your profile and see, okay, they were working on a master's degree at that time. It makes sense. But you never want to allow them the opportunity to make negative assumptions. You really want to tell your story the way you want them to hear it. Uh, let me see. Um, let me let me take these questions towards the end. I just want to make sure we get through the presentation. If I didn't answer your question, feel free to copy it and paste it later, but I want to make sure that we get through the rest of the presentation. Um, and if you have any further questions, you can reach out to me via Slack or Student Hub privately. Okay, so here's an example um, of my current position here with Udacity. So I provide a very brief description of what I do here because for the most part, people can have a good understanding of what a career coach does. Um, so I don't spend too, too much time on that. Um, and I focus more specifically on achievements. I've only been here since mid-April, so I don't have a ton of things to talk about. Um, but so one thing that I did uh, is the previous webinar that I mentioned was facilitating this um, how to write achievement statements and I showcase my impact by showing how many views that it received. So 1.4 thousand views on YouTube, it's pretty impressive um, for the right employer. They may go to my profile and see, oh, we're looking for somebody who can facilitate webinars. Oh, we're working with somebody who can deliver workshops online or we're looking for somebody with experience using Zoom. I've listed all of that in one very brief impactful section. Um, so think about that as you're working on highlighting your skills. And then I took it a step further and uploaded a link to that from the YouTube video that I uh, mentioned earlier. So they can go in and they can actually watch that if they wanted to. Uh, but it's a good way to showcase um, the impact as well as provide a relevant work sample. And I've only been here since April. So it kind of goes to show you like this is a mindset for me. I haven't been here for years on end. So if you've been at a company for a very long time, and you have nothing to show for it, I would challenge you to think a little bit more outside the box and how you can showcase the work that you're doing because it's not as hard as a lot of people make it out to be. Um, you just have to be in that mindset going into it as well as think outside the box in ways that you can showcase your impact. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so I want you to jump back in the chat again. Let me know what are some things that might work for you in terms of uploading media on your experience section. So in your past jobs, maybe right now you're working as a freelancer, maybe you're doing some volunteer work. What are some specific things that you could potentially upload as media in your experience section? Article links, GitHub links, great, yep. What else? Videos. Videos are awesome, especially on social media. What else? Built websites. Awesome. Great example. Blog links. Um, showcase volunteer work. That's a good question. I, if you 
have intensive volunteer work and you don't have a lot of work experience, I would say put that in your experience section uh, because it's still experience. A lot of people downplay their volunteer experience because there's a section for that, but I would recommend you putting it there, especially if you have a gap. Um, volunteering is a great way to fill that gap, but it's also a great way to showcase education because just because you're not getting paid for something does not mean it's not a job. Um, so doing the same, treating that the same exact way you would do a real job, showcase your impact, showcase media. Um, link to customer testimonials, that's awesome. Another thing that you can do is look into recommendations, but we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, mailing campaign templates, yes. Um, I also have, do my own email marketing for my business. So another thing that you could showcase is your open rates as well as, um, like your click rates and different things like that. So that's a really good one, as well as just the templates are great too. Um, okay, so let's keep it moving. Some of you have asked questions that we'll talk about a little bit later, so I'll answer those as we go. Does being a mentor at Udacity come under volunteering? I think you could put that under um, experience. I think you could definitely do that there. Okay, moving right along, recommendations. So this is an area that I find very important that I see as a huge missed opportunity for a lot of people. If you think about it, they're a lot like Amazon reviews. So if you ever go to buy something on Amazon or maybe you go to uh, check out a new restaurant on Yelp, or something like that. Maybe there are different platforms um, where you're located, but the first thing that we normally do is jump straight to those reviews or jump straight to that rating. Some people do this with LinkedIn as well. If they're deciding that they wanna hire you or they wanna work with you, a lot of them will jump directly down to your actual recommendations and see if people vouch for your work. Because one, it adds credibility, but it also, contributes to this thing called social proof, which for any of you in digital marketing, you have an understanding that social proof is a great tool that we use to help sell things. So if 10 people have said that this is a great person to work with, chances are I'm more likely to believe them than I am to just believe that one person who's saying that they're great. Um, so it can be really helpful for you to put recommendations on your profile and just get in the habit of asking for them. Ask previous supervisors, ask colleagues that you currently work with. Um, if you are doing freelancing or entrepreneur, ask your clients to leave you recommendations. It's been really, really helpful for me in terms of gaining new clients. Um, I've had people actually approach me and say, I saw one of my friends left you a recommendation. I didn't even know that they worked with you. And so that's why I decided to be a client of yours. Um, so a couple of easy way to get them is to give them first. So if you want your colleague or your coworker to give you one, just go and write them one for something that they're trying to be known for. So you want to make sure that it's targeted and you want to make it easy. So give one to them first and then request one. Um, if you go through actual LinkedIn, I'll show you how to request one, but it, it, you can make it very easy for somebody and just say, hey, I'd love for you to leave me a recommendation based on your experience working with me at this company and doing this type of work that, you know, insert work that you want to be known for. So if employers go to your profile, they can see this person is vouching for their ability to work with, machine learning or do something um, with web development or whatever, um, you make that easy for them and tell them exactly what you want to talk about. Um, and once again, this, this section is important for job seekers as well as entrepreneurs because for the most part, that social proof is very helpful for you in terms of establishing credibility. Uh, my customers, my colleagues are not on LinkedIn. I get that. Um, <laughs> I get that. Definitely understand that. I understand that a lot of people are not on LinkedIn and they're not becoming active on LinkedIn. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this session because I see LinkedIn growing very rapidly right now and I think it'll only continue to grow. So as early as you can start to implement these things as possible, the better because once everybody decides to join LinkedIn at that point, you'll be like, I've been, I've been waiting for this to happen. <laughs> um, so once again, these are just best practices. These are my suggestions. These are not things that are required from employers. These are just things to take your, um, 
your 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 profile to the next level um, so if you don't have anything here just keep this in mind as you continue to go through if your colleagues are on LinkedIn later you know then ask them but once again like I said most people don't have a lot of recommendations if any so you're not behind it's just another way to stand out amongst other people um, for college students, who could we give or get them from? You could honestly get together with a couple of people in your um, class and do that. Um, if you're doing a group project, just tell everybody, hey, we're each going to spend some time after this project and write a recommendation for each person. Then you already potentially have like three, four, five recommendations on your profile already just from one simple project. Um, so sometimes it's about encouraging other people to get on LinkedIn and utilize it as a way to help build their own personal brand. But also, if you if you work at the college, obviously a supervisor there could help. Professors, if you're close to them, don't just ask a random teacher to give you a recommendation. You want to actually have a relationship. Um, I am unemployed for the past eight months. Can I enter the title of self-learning in my experience section? I think you definitely can. I think that's a great way to explain what you've been doing. And then you can showcase the different things that you've been working on there. Um, I think that that's, a, that's an extremely good idea for you to, to put that as your actual job title. Um, you could do that. Yep. Okay. I think we're almost done. Yeah. Okay. So um, I would love to get some brief questions before I go through some things on LinkedIn. Um, so if there were questions that I didn't answer before, please put them in the chat now. Um, and I'm going to try to get through as many as I can and still get to the platform. So would you keep track of all your past duties that were not necessarily achievements in a specific document? I am a big advocate for keeping everything. <laughs> I am a hoarder as it relates to work. And so I keep files, I keep presentations, I keep old resumes. I do that. I have a master document that I use. And I think that that's important because like you said, sometimes you forget. Um, let's say, for example, we'll go back to the teacher example. Let's say you are a math teacher and want to transition to a data analyst and you get rid of all your stuff about creating lesson plans and classroom management, and all that stuff. And then you become a data analyst and then you want to go back to um, maybe teaching, but you want to be a lead teacher or a principal or something like that then you have all of those old ones that you can pull back on as well um, but if you kind of delete that and start new you kind of miss that opportunity so i'm a big fan of keeping track of everything i do um, i have different media and achievements as far back as my uh as my 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 last year in in college and so i'm always keeping track of the work that i'm doing because you never know when it can be helpful to utilize again Okay, how and where can I show that I am looking for a job abroad? That's a great question. That's a very difficult question. I don't have a great answer for that. Um, I don't think that there is a good way to showcase that you're looking abroad unless you include that in your summary, which is really the only place that that makes sense to do that. Um, for you, you're not going to, and this is, goes for everybody, if you're looking for jobs abroad, you're probably not going to get a lot of attention from employers. Um, so if you're trying to transition from one country to another, people are not going out of their way to try to hire internationally. Not, not in my experience. A lot of employers are open to hiring internationally, but they're not going out of their way to find talent in different countries. It's just, it's already hard enough to find talent locally. Recruiters and employers just don't have time to do that. And so um, as they're searching for employees um, to hire, a lot of them are looking locally first, um, or that's just how those keyword searches are populating because another thing that contributes to that search result is um, sometimes location and also the amount of connections that you have in common. So you know, naturally, you're more likely to have more locate more connections where you're located. And so it's much easier for you to be found in the actual place that you're looking. So that's good to know. I'm glad you asked that question, but it can be very hard. So I would say include that in your summary, as well as you're going to have to be much more aggressive with your outreach in terms of connecting with employers and reaching out to people through LinkedIn as a way to try to connect, ask questions, schedule phone calls, video chats, whatever you can to get your you know name known for whatever work you want to be doing good question though do we add scholarship programs um i think it depends i think if all it was is 
you know, paying for your ability to attend a course. I don't know that that is relevant in any of those sections. Um, there's definitely some sections where you can include like awards, um, accomplishments, achievements. I don't see people going down and looking at that section too frequently. It is an area that you can include, but if all it is is that you got funding for a program, that's not going to be as appealing as you sharing experience or anything like that. So it's definitely something you can include. Um, I didn't go through every single section of LinkedIn. I went through the things that I, in my experience, are the most important and the things that recruiters look for the most. So there are definitely some pieces that I didn't cover. So take some independent research to look at some of those other sections. But those that I went over are kind of the most important as it relates to your profile. Can I add nano degrees in the experience section as well? Um, apart from education, you can. Uh, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. I think it's better if you go the route of saying something like the person mentioned earlier with like self-learning and showcase all of the different things that you've been working on that in that gap, but you still do want to have Udacity in your education section. And I think that that's important to mention as well. Um, something I forgot to talk about, but include your nano degree in your education section, even if you're not finished with it. Um, some people will wait until they're done. Put something like, let's say you're doing the um, algorithms and data structures, um, let's say like you just put that as the title and then just put in progress next to it. And then you can add Udacity under it. Um, and then you can also upload media where you're uploading some of the projects that you're completing or links to, to GitHub. Um, but definitely put that there. Even if you're not done, just say that it's in progress. How can you approach looking for work as a graphic designer, or web developer, or should the goal be to just focus on one thing at a time? That's a great question. These are all great questions. Um, I would say you can definitely you can definitely try both. I think it's always easier as it relates to anything personal branding or branding in general for you to have a very targeted focus. I've struggled in my own experience kind of going between like the career coach and the speaker. People are like, well, which one do you do? And I'm like, I do both. Um, so for me, it's important to, to push both. Um, but I know for a fact that if I was to focus on one or the other, I would probably be more successful in one or the other. But I personally enjoy doing both. And so I like pushing both. Um, so that's up to you. It's a personal decision. Is too many media or visuals it too, is that bad? I don't think so. Um, I don't think you can have too many because even if you upload multiple, it'll cut off some. So you have to click like more to see what else they have. Um, career change, what should be added in the headline, the current role or the future role. So always, always, always thinking futuristically. Your, wh whatever you're currently doing is not going to help you if you're looking for something completely different because it's not going to contribute to your keyword searches. And if your headline says something that you're currently doing that's not related, people are not going to go click on your profile because that's not what they're looking for. So you always want to think futuristically when it comes to your headline and your, your brand in general. Um, if you've been laid off, how do you address this? I would put something in that description where you have your position. Um, you could even put like laid off. It's not the most attractive title, but you could put something in the description that says like um, laid off due to a reduction in workforce or um, a 40% reduction in work workforce, something like that to address that. This is my personal opinion. I'm a big fan of addressing every single thing up front because I it, the worst thing you can do in me, to me as a person is waste my time. And so I don't like to waste my own time. I don't like to waste other people's time. If they have an issue with the information that I'm presenting, they can know that in the beginning versus we have to go through two, three interviews and then you decide you don't want me um, because of those issues. So I, I'm a big fan of putting everything up front. That's a personal decision though. Um, if I was an intern in a creative agency, do I write my position as an intern or creative copywriter? Um, you don't want to lie about your position, um, but I think if that's if you were doing creative copywriting, I think you can definitely include that as your as your title. Or you could do something like creative copywriter parentheses intern, um, so they have an understanding. If you were only there for maybe like two months, they understand that like you didn't get fired, you didn't get laid off. It was just a short term. Um, so I'm a big fan of doing things like um, laid off, reduction in workforce, temporary intern contract. Let them know up front so there aren't questions. You keep hearing me say I don't want anybody to have any questions except will you fit and how much do you charge. Uh, that that's my personal mentality. Um, okay. Let's see. 
Um, how to indicate that you're looking for remote work. I think the only way you can do that is in your summary. Um, I'm still looking for graphics that come across. Oh, okay. Is it okay to put student? It is okay to put student in your current role. You can you can do anything you want with your profile. There's there's not really things that are that are frowned upon if you're trying to provide context. If you're trying to explain a situation where an employer might ask a question, I think that that's that's always going to be helpful. If you're establishing things up front so that they know why you have a gap or they know why you're not currently working, you're stating that up front, and then you have your education below it to back it up. Um, okay, and I want to be considered as candidate brand director. How should I work in headline summary? Okay, so that's a good question. So what I would love for all of you to do, if you're interested, if you'd like some feedback, I have some homework for everybody. Um, I would love for you all to take some time, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. I'm going to give you a deadline. Let's see, today is Tuesday. By the end of the day, tomorrow. I'm going to make it quick because this is a, it shouldn't take you too long. Put your new LinkedIn headline in the careers section of Student Hub and tag me and I will go through those and look at those on like Thursday or Friday and see if I can provide some feedback. But I, I want to make that sense of urgency because I want you all to go through and actually do it um, sooner rather than later. Um, so I do want to show you one last thing. Um, so I know we had a lot more questions. Um, we do have some upcoming webinars, so stay tuned for those. I also mentioned that there's that one that we're having at the end of the month um, that will be focused specifically on um, um, engaging on the platform as well as creating content. So I want to make sure that I'm sharing the right screen. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to show you all is if you go to your actual profile. There are some things that I didn't include in the presentation that I've found kind of since then. Um, and if you scroll down, you can see it. mine is t a ton of media, a lot of videos, articles, um, presentations, different things like that. If you look at this area, let me see, the skills and endorsements area. There's a new feature where you can actually take a skill quiz and none of these are really relevant for me, but I think some of them might actually be really helpful for you all because a lot of them are tech-based and I am not a tech expert. So this is a great opportunity for some of you who might be a little bit more familiar with some of these um, languages, um, software platforms and different programs, um, those can be really helpful. That will give you kind of like a stamp of approval in that area. Um, and that can be really helpful for you in terms of establishing credibility once again. So um, another thing that I wanted to mention is in this section, you can take that skills quiz, but you really want these top three skills to be the top three skills that you want to be known for. So if what you're doing is, is not related to what is currently listed in your skills, that's something that you might wanna change. I personally have done enough social media to where I might personally change this after putting a little bit more thought into it. I'm not gonna jump and change it now, but I may change that because these two are really the top things that I'm looking for and I may bump career coaching back up, which was previously there, but your top three skills you want to be listed there, the things that you really want to be known for. Um, but yeah, the other only other thing that I wanted to show to you all is the Student Hub. A lot of people aren't familiar with the Student Hub or where it's located, but it's located within the classroom where you kind of complete to work on your nano degree program. But here, here's your career portal where you go to sign up for um, career coaching sessions as well as um, look at those career projects that we have. Um, but here's the Student Hub, this purple message looking icon, and it will take you to the page I was actually just at. Um, but then if you go to the careers page, we have a chat here. This is very similar to um, the careers channel within Slack, but we're trying to shift a lot of our content over to this location versus Slack. So you'll start to see us post a lot more here. This is where I'd love for you all to type in your headline and tag me in it so I can look at it and provide some feedback. But other than that, we have a couple more minutes. Um, is there any any last questions or overarching questions? If it's 
too specific. Um, I, I want to make sure this is going to be helpful for everybody. Um, but if there are any questions that you have specifically regarding like your LinkedIn profile, uh, let me know now. Um, but if this was helpful, if you feel like this was interesting, um, make sure that you check out our upcoming events um, on our events calendar bookmark it. If you don't have it on there already, check in periodically to see some of the events that we're hosting. Um, but the one that we're having on the 26th is going to be focused specifically on LinkedIn again. And it is going to be highlighting um, engagement on the platform as well as starting to create content. That's where you can really start to establish yourself as a subject matter expert and draw a lot more traffic over to your profile. I'm not... Um, check the link that Rachel put in there um, to get access to that. If you don't have access to Student Hub, uh, feel free um, to email support at udacity.com and let them know that you're having issues accessing the, the Student Hub. If you don't have access to that, submit that email ticket so that they can um, provide that opportunity for you. Uh, let's take this one last question and then we're going to sign off. If the job opportunity is posted in another foreign language, can I submit my resume in English? Is this fine? Um, that's a tough question. I think this is my personal opinion. If it's posted in a different language, I would more than likely think that they're looking for somebody to submit the application in that language as, as well. Um, but if you have questions, always feel free to um, create an additional like profile if you want to, because you can, oh yeah, yep, just like Nicholas said, you can have profiles in different languages. Um, that's more so focused on kind of LinkedIn, but if it's like resume, you might have to, you might have to kind of follow what they're looking for or reach out and find somebody at that company and ask them that question. Um, but thank you all. If you are interested in connecting with me, um, I can drop my, uh, I'll drop my LinkedIn here. It's very simple. Um, if you want to use mine as kind of an example, I've had some people who have requested that. Um, but feel free to connect with me. I'm always, always, always posting content, giving job search advice, um, helping people with their personal branding. Feel free to like and comment and engage in mine, um, as well as tag me in anything that you're working on, as long as it's not super duper technical and I can actually understand what you're talking about. Um, but we'll talk more about that in the next session on August 26th. But please um, check into our events calendar and stay tuned to what we have coming up. Thank you all for joining. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you all.